My old singer Heavy Duty 110 was becoming unreliable, so I decided to look for a new machine. I reached out to a couple of friends and read some reviews, watched some videos, and I settled on the Juki HLZF 400. I wanted to expand my horizons and look beyond Singer, so I asked a few friends about their recommendations. One of them works for Hollywood, making costumes and props, and she really likes the Berninas. She says they are workhorses and really reliable. She hardly ever has to get hers fixed, and that's fantastic. Another friend does a lot of SEA, does a lot of heavy duty sewing, and she recommended looking into quilting machines. And I was like, huh, interesting, okay. So she recommended the Juki line, specifically because they do quilting. But as I did more research and watched more videos, it turns out they are also the line of sewing machines that are used in manufacturing clothing and uh, home goods. Originally, they didn't have a consumer line. They were only used in manufacturing. But they came out with a consumer line and they use some of their technology that's used in manufacturing in these machines. Some of the features that really had me hooked was how well it sewed through thick material. I watched it sew a double folded hem of a pair of jeans like it was nothing. Features that I was looking for in a sewing machine is how well does it sew through canvas, several layers of canvas, how well does it sew through leather. I also really like using applique for making banners for my LARP characters and their factions. I'm not really a quilter, but I will use quilts in a lot of my costuming. I have made several gambesons out of quilts. And if you want to see how that's done, put that request down in the comments. I was originally going to go for the 300, but that one wasn't quite available. It seems like it's out of stock everywhere. I don't know if they are going to continue that one or if they're just going to phase it out. So I took uh, the next step up for the 400. Why not the 600? Well, most reviews say that, oh, it's, it's pretty much like the other ones, but it just has more bells and whistles, which I was like, nah, I don't need those. We're good, we're fine. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done this after arm day. Hold on. Put this on the floor and see if I can do it. Wow, it really came with all the accessories that are in the video. Oh, one of the other features that made me look at the Juki closer was what they call a box feed. Usually sewing machines have their dog feeds, which is the little teeth on the plate that feed the fabric through. They usually go in a kind of an oval or circular motion, whereas the Juki line, they go in a box motion so that your material will stay put, it doesn't slide all over the place, and you get more straight lines in your stitches, in your seams, in your hems. So that was an exciting feature that I want in my sewing machine. This is something I wasn't expecting to be part of their package. This is the lever that will lift your foot so that you can keep your hands on your project instead of fiddling with your machine. Oh yay, they give you needles, of course. Ooh, lots of accessories. Your feet comes with a instruction manual and a DVD. Nice hard case. Oh, there's more foam in here. More foam. Oh. Foam supposed to stay? Oh, I think this foam is supposed to stay in here. It's actually foam lined. I don't think that's supposed to come out. So pretty. Wow, they really had this well packaged. This is like, wow. There is, there is foam right here. Wow, they even encased the presser foot. Silica gel. This is what the front of the machine looks like. It has a thread cutting button, a needle up and down button, and a dial for stitching fast or slow. 
There is a keypad for choosing one out of 157 stitch patterns, plus a foam sort of keypad for doing monograms in three fonts. That's cool. Huh, I wasn't expecting them to give me an open toe foot. This is used for applique. This is a quilting foot, also good for doing applique and embroidery work. Here is a walking foot. It's used for feeding layers of fabric and padding through the machine evenly while quilting. So if you're quilting your own gambeson, this is a good foot to have. They were lovely enough to give you a pack of standard and double needles to start. This is an extension for larger size spools. It snaps on the back. This is the pedal. Where's the... Oh, nice! I like that it winds up in the back. The pedal has a hands-free thread cutter by pressing down with your heel. Here are all the various stitches programmed into the machine with loads of different buttonholes that you can not only set at different lengths, but also widths, which a lot of sewing machines don't have that option. You can do monograms in three different fonts and save them. It also has an automatic needle threader, so you don't have to go through the pain of threading a needle. I really like that it has a dial on the front for slower precision sewing or super fast at 900 stitches per minute, as you see here. We are now upping the thickness from linen to upholstery fabric. I switched up to a denim needle to handle this. Now for some outdoor duck canvas folded once. Let's fold it again to make four layers of canvas. The clunking sound is actually the needle puncturing the fabric and not the machine itself. These are really strong seams, even with just a regular grade cotton thread and not upholstery thread. What the heck, let's fold again to make six layers of canvas. Let's really push the limits, one more fold. It barely fits under there. I wouldn't recommend more than eight layers of canvas. Yes! That was amazing! That's like a quarter inch of thick canvas. I want to recreate what I saw in the video that had me sold on this machine. Let's sew a strap of leather onto canvas. It just sewed from canvas to leather, just as if it was nothing. That was sexy. Now for stretch fabric, I am using a pre-programmed stretch sti- Wait. Crap. I forgot to change needles. I was using a leather needle and it shoved the material too far down into the machine. It's jammed. This is why what needle you use is important. Never pull your fabric out when it's jammed. Cut it out with scissors or cut the threads underneath with a seam ripper. If you pull, you can really mess up the timing of your machine. I tried tiny and larger stitches. My old machine never did that well with stretch fabrics. This is great. That's my new Juki sewing machine. I can't wait to sew all the things. I hope this video helps you make decisions on what you need in a sewing machine. Do the research, talk to people who actually are using the sewing machine in a way that you think you're going to use the sewing machine. Find out what's reliable in your price range. It really just depends.